and welcome to the Paper Stack Podcast. I am Brett, this is Rick. We are doing this series called My First Note. We have our second guest of the show, which is Kimberly. Yes, Kimberly. <laughs> Fawcett. Kimberly Fawcett. Yes. yes, so I had to make sure I got it Kimberly. Yeah, he, Brett messed up and called her Kim. <laughs> so we've already seen it, already recorded it, so we wanted to let you know. Uh, it's a great podcast, a lot of interesting stuff, especially the first note purchase. There was some hey, of some crazy twists and turns. So yeah, really interested in bringing you this one, delivering you a really good podcast with somebody who's who's been in the space for as long as I have. They've been about a decade, a little over a decade, 11 years. So mm-hmm. we talk about some interesting stuff and go over the note space in general and her journey to where she is today. Yep, all right then. Let's jump in. Yeah, here we go. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's nice to see you guys. Good to see you too. We're doing a little Zoom thing. We normally have actually seen each other quite a few times in person at the events. Sarasota? I I think the last one was Florida? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was, was it DME? And then did you go down to IMN afterwards? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was just unsure. Yeah, DME, IMN. Yeah, we had that nice, really nice restaurant. Really nice. Mm -hmm. That was that? Nice. We had the seafood. Mm, yeah, I remember you were there. You, you said, weren't there. Yeah. Aaron paid for us. You weren't there. I wasn't. There. <laughs> oh, and so I came in yeah. late because I had something going on. It was the first night, and then I met you guys up on the rooftop for drinks. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, I guess with the, the in, entry part, we usually like to just to get to know Kimberly. You know, okay. You know what, where are you at? Well, where'd where you come you from? Yes. Where do I come from? Originally yeah, yeah. from Connecticut. Okay. So I'm an East Coast girl, and now I'm living on the West Coast. But we did a little stop in the Dallas area for a little while. So um, kind of a nomad without having any military need for it. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I have been in real estate forever because mm-hmm. I grew up in a real estate family. So it was just mm-hmm. the logical thing that you did. Um, and I... I very quickly became a frustrated landlord like a lot of us. So I quickly became one of those really overworked, frustrated landlords. Um, And I went to a note invent, similar to DME, but it only happened in the Dallas area. And someone came out and started talking about note investing. And I was was totally sold when he said, you can get the same monthly payments from your notes that you could have gotten from your tenants. And I was like, okay, sign me up, I'm done. Yeah, (laughs) when was this? Around what time? 2011. Oh. I started investing in 2012. So that's where we're, we're like the same the same time frame. Like I I retired at the end of 2011 and sold my company and was gonna play golf and raise my kids. And in like late February or March, I bought my first note of 2012, and it was just like, oh, yep. here we are. And you probably feel the same way I do about that time frame. If I had known better, I would have bought so many more. Oh, uh, I would have bought Things it were all. Still and really cheap then. I would have bought it all, and I would have held it because I mean, our first our first deal was uh, ninety grand in debt, a frame duplex in Winter Garden, and we got it for eighty four hundred dollars. And I mentioned I mentioned that I kind of I'm lucky I got through it because I, I didn't know any better, and I was from the real estate space. And the last person to sell it on the MLS was the actual owner. So I had her number. And so I called her up after I went and looked at the property. I drove by it to see if I was going to buy it. And I was like, hey, I'm about to buy your note. Do you want to sign the house over to me or do you want to go through foreclosure? She's like, I've happily signed this over to you. And so I didn't know you're not supposed to do that. That kind of was like, oops. <laughs> but she was like, yeah, take it. So we, yeah. we got the property back and sold it uh, in 14 days. And I was at the title company waiting. Uh, they go, look, I need an assignment of mortgage. And I was like, an assignment of what? I don't even know what you're talking about. You know, it worked out. But yeah, it's uh, I wish I would have bought more. And that's one. It's like, I think things are renting for about 1500 aside in that area right now. Aside. 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 So, but whatever. It got me into the note space. Yeah, that's yeah. true. My first note was similar. It was actually also in Florida. Um, it was in Miami. Okay. And it was one of those, it really, you know, trying to go through uh, the paperwork and the ownership chain, it really confused me. Like when I was going back and reviewing this for this conversation, I was like, well, what was confusing about that? But at the time, the, so the borrower's name was on the loan. 
mm -hmm. was no longer on the house. Oh. The HOA had foreclosed. So for mm -hmm. a while there, the HOA owned it. And then all of a sudden there was a third name. And I just could not figure out what had happened. And so I happened to, you know, be at a note setting and a, a person who uh, happened to live in Florida who could drive by it and go take a look at it. We decided to, to do it together because he understood what happened. Um, the HOA foreclosed and sold it to another resident in the complex. So the borrower was long gone. I could have gone through the note to get the money from him, but again, he was long gone. And then it turned out to be very interesting. Um, this man was crazy. <laughs> he didn't want to hire an attorney. Uh, he would call the attorney we were using. Um, and rant and rave. And then he finally decided that he was going to sue every person that ever used his name, because, you know, it's his name, he should have free use of it, that ever used his name, he was going to sue them for $10 million in U.S. silver coin. <laughs> so a cashier's check wouldn't even have been good enough. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. And then we had someone uh, do a walk-by you know, to see if it was as good at, cause it was a condo and uh -huh. it was a one building complex. So you couldn't get a good view of it. So we had someone walking through the complex and he came out and threatened the guy with a gun. Oh, so he, this guy was just crazy. So, you know, we kept plugging along cause you know, that was just crazy. And finally he decided to hire an attorney. I guess at some point he decided we were for real. Yeah. Obviously when you hire an attorney, the tone immediately changed. Right. And However, he didn't hire the best attorney because the attorney got on the phone. It was a one bedroom, one bath condo. It was almost 800 square feet. And we had valued it at around 28. No, we had valued it, valued it at around 40, although the unit right next door had just sold for 65, but they had mm -hmm. done a lot of work. The UPB was 28. And the attorney actually told our attorney that the guy purchased it, loved the condo, and had done a ton of work on it. So he's completely renovated the whole place, and he'd really like to hold on to it. Okay, so now I know I have an even nicer asset than I thought I did. Right. So we offered him 38 to just mutually leave the deal. He countered with 30, and we eventually ended up on 34. Um, so we paid like 18 for the note at that time. Mm -hmm. We ended up with 34, and we did that in like four months. Perfect. So that was a great first note to get you interested. But here's the problems with it. First, I bought it from someone who was training us how to buy notes, which is just a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, he got a markup. He was telling us it was a good note. It turned out fine, but that is just a really bad idea. Mm -hmm. um, it's a conflict of interest. Correct. The markup, you can make a good argument for because they're doing some additional work, but they have to disclose that. It's the non-disclosure of it that makes it really icky. Second, this was an HOA state. We're involved in the HOA foreclosure. And I had no idea anything about super lien states. Never heard of mm -hmm. it. Never thought about it. Nothing. Not a good idea. Ultimately, I think I liked the way it turned out. I mean, I would have, you know, nowadays I would have gone back and said, no, I probably would have wanted the condo because it was worth so much money. Yeah. But in general, I don't mind foreclosing. I just don't like throwing people on the street. No, that's it's no fun. And it's but like, yeah, at, in For twenty guns. yeah in twenty twelve, I thought it was it was pretty easy to get property back. Like if you wanted it, you could write checks. You could do you could get the property back if you were dead set on it because mm -hmm. values had shrunk so low, and it was still just like oh man, things were in the toilet. There was an abundance of inventory, so it's like hey, I want this property back. But now I think that's changed a little bit. But at least it wasn't a super lean state that wipes out the first mortgage. Exactly. At least because um, we've had we've had those, and you know, being in Florida, we started mm -hmm. just buying in Florida because we're like, okay, we're just yeah. buying here, and that's because there was also a lot of product in Florida. Oh, there's most tons of, of my first notes were in Florida. Tons of product, and in the area we were, you know, coming from coming from the real estate space, and not really. Not getting any education first, we we sort of mm -hmm. just like, hey, you know, an asset manager, not asset, an REO agent asked me, hey, do you want to buy a note? And mm -hmm. an asset manager had said, here, see if anybody you know will buy a note that buys real estate. Right. So I didn't have any training. It was just kind of like, they're going to sell me that for 8400 bucks. Mm -hmm. Sure. I didn't realize anything about it. 
So we yeah, and I, I think touch. when you come from real estate investing, I mm -hmm. don't think you fully realize the difference of being in the paper versus being in the property. Um, it doesn't have to be, remain a huge difference, but you're in a totally different position. And if you don't really understand that, you're not going to look at all of your options in the deal. I, I agree. I want to ask you this. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. It is a, it is a completely different world. But it is also such a benefit to make them if you have that background in real estate and mm -hmm. potentially like fix and flip or asset management or rental to then move into the note space versus mm -hmm. never having owned any sort of real estate or dabbled in real estate. I think it's a huge advantage just because you you understand mm -hmm. rehab, you understand yep. the cost that goes into fixing something up. Um, mm -hmm. I tell you what I didn't understand was... Uh, the difference between the cost of fixing up stuff here in Florida versus the Midwest where they have basements that flood. Oh, I got torched on those. Those deals. Yeah. The first time you hear about winterizing, you're like, what, you're going to pour what down the pipes? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't think about that in Florida. No. So I was like, we have to do what? But I also think the flip side is true. I think becoming an, uh, a real estate investor or continuing to be a real estate investor, you are better off if you understand the paper because there's 100%. so many deals that you'd love to get into, but you know, no one will finance it. Everybody's scared of it, whatever, but you can, you can find ways to work the terms so that it works for everybody. And if That's... you're just buying, flipping, selling next, you don't learn those nuances. No, it definitely the finance side of it. I think it's another tool in your tool belt, another exit mm -hmm. strategy. It opens up, you know, mm -hmm. it almost yep. doubles your exit possibilities on things you can do with owner financing and selling partials yep. and just the, the whole thing along the way. It's like if, you, if you're mm -hmm. not using the financing side and I'm not saying mm -hmm. every deal is right for it, but right. it's definitely nice that you can apply that tool when mm -hmm. needed and, and we've done it. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. something definitely I'm grateful for. And I think it's one of the reasons why, well, I mean, it's been profitable for me, but I think it's one of the reasons why I've stuck with note investing because I feel like every deal's a challenge. It's not like I get into it and, oh, I gotta do this and I gotta do mm -hmm. this. I'm like, oh, I wonder how this one will turn out. Like, I think it's gonna be this, let's see. Oh, you don't wanna do that? How about we try this? It, it's like um, a white elephant it's just, exchange. Exactly. What, it is just like, choose your own adventure. Yeah, choose your own adventure. Yeah. Like what's gonna happen? Exactly, yep, I completely agree. And so it, you, uh, you went from real estate, you jumped directly into notes where you, so you were doing, mm -hmm. were you doing property management or just had rentals and you were kind of just I had rentals, just had rentals. Had rentals. And then it's like, okay, uh -huh. I'm into yep. the, the real estate space. You buy your first note. What mm -hmm. happens after that? Do you say, Oh, that was cool. Let's do that again. Do we sell all the mm -hmm. rentals and yes. move on? Okay. Well, I sold all the residential ones, you know, got, got my tenants all locked in and sold it for the highest, you know, income value I could. But over time, I am back, I'm back into being a landlord, but I have a strip mall. So okay. I'm a residential note investor and a commercial landlord. I so, yeah, I have a cute little strip mall that is anchored by a Starbucks. Yeah. So it's uh, just nice. my, my little cash cow. Where is it? It is in Arlington, Texas. Mm -hmm. How do you stumble into that? Uh, good question. We, we decided we wanted to go from, we made that, I think it's a, typical mistake where we were doing residential rentals. Let's go multifamily. Let's just get a bigger place. You know, you do all the same thing, one roof, it'll be great. Um, so we did buy a small apartment complex. There were 28 units in two buildings and just realized we hated it because it was just the same as doing houses. I don't know. It was, yeah, didn't enjoy that. But we had accumulated, you know, enough profit in that, that we didn't want to have to pay um, capital gains on it. So we, we um, 10, 1031'd into the strip mall. Okay. Because as I don't, I don't know if everybody realizes this, you can't 1031 into notes because that's going mm -hmm. from real estate to paper. You yes. You can only do real estate to real estate. Yes. And we've, I explored that with other investors. They say, well, can we do a 1031? I go, I don't mm -hmm. think so. So, nope. um, how, so how big is the strip mall? It's, it's anchored by Starbucks. How many units? It's anchored are by a Starbucks. We have five units. The other, uh, there's even one unit that somebody um, split one, you know, like one of one and a half spaces. So I've got one of these teeny tiny little space. It's not even a thousand square feet. I finally got a tenant there. So I am fully rented out um, and it's great. 
That How do you, great. what kind of business for such a small space? What is that? Uh, let's see. We, it's the Starbucks. Then it is a training center. Um, then next to that is a vape shop. That's the only <laughs> perfect people I could get into a teeny one. And then on the other side is one of those, um, any lab testing sites. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So, you know, it, it's really kind of convenient. You have to get trained for your new job, but you also have to get you know, blood right. tests for your yeah. new job. So they're all in the same mall. And then when you're done with the stress, you can get a coffee and head home. <laughs> sit on the sit on the front porch and have a, a smoke and a cup of coffee. Exactly. <laughs> smoke and a Starbucks and they're all set. I am taking care of people's needs. I, you know, That's a one-stop shop right there. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so is it a lot less headaches in the single family or the multifamily having the... Oh, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Different I mean, type of clientele. I think the biggest problem, biggest headache we've had um, one tenant put up their sign, you know, while I was trying to rent out the little one, the guy next door put up his sign and it was a little too big, sort of encroached in the sign space that the other person should have had. So they had to argue it out about moving the sign. Okay. Really? This is an argument. I mean, okay. whatever. Um, but you, you know, you're dealing with business people granted in a small shopping center, you're dealing with small business people. But still, business people are different than, you know, the woman that really wants you to paint her apartment purple. Like, you know, whatever. That makes so, sense. It's yeah, a different, different mindsets, different reasons. Plus, I have a property manager, so that helps. Uh, I think property managers are more useful in the commercial space than they necessarily are in the residential space. So. That's good stuff. So you're still your commercial landlord, residential lender. Uh, mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. what uh, what's the next 12, 24 months hold for you? What's what's on the horizon? What what's what projects are you starting to work on? I am still in the middle of putting together Notes Investing Academy 2.0 because okay. I started that in 2017 with two partners, mm -hmm. but now it's just me, including their old videos would have just been weird. So I'm mm -hmm. um, working on that. That is going to relaunch in June. Okay. Um, and I will be at DME in June. Uh, moderating a panel. So, you know, anybody that wants to talk about that can come grab me there. After that, I'm actually talking to um, someone else in the note space and we might work together on a more advanced course. My course will nail the basics for you. So you mm -hmm. completely understand what's going on. And now you have your choice what you want to do next. You could be a small investor. You could only invest in note funds, but now you really understand what's going on. Or, you know, someday you could run your own fund, whatever you want to do. But the advanced course would cover some of the really tricky things. Yeah. What happens, you know, how could you end up in a situation where the note that you bought that looked really pretty is uncollectible now that you're trying to foreclose? Um, different options? things like that. Yeah, so more, then, more workout stuff, more like, hey, exactly. this is like, this is how you're mm -hmm. diffusing bombs now. You learned what a exactly. bomb was in, in the first course. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, now we get into the really fun stuff. Case studies, exactly. stuff like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, at first you you figure you'll just avoid the bombs. Now the bombs you'll up. realize either A, you got one, or B, if you think about it going into it, you might make some serious money if you know how to defuse the bomb and no one else does. That's, That's it. Isn't it? Ooh, sorry about that. I just kicked my dog. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're, we're not editing that out. That's staying in there for sure. That's why I was really worried he was going to bark. So I kept him here in the office. And then he snuck under my desk. So, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that'll be fun. And then after that, we've even talked about setting up like a buyer's club kind mm -hmm. of thing. I realize there has been a buyer's club in the industry before, and it was an absolute disaster. But this one's going to be different. It's going to be like uh, previously vetted sellers or buyers, and we're all going to buy the tape together. Oh, so wow. it's not like the buyer's club would be selling anything to you or brokering anything to you. We'd be doing it together. Sure. Um, heard of that. And yeah. it would be with the people that now know how to defuse bombs. Yeah. They would have all had the same training come in. So very excited about that. It's a SWAT Hope team. That happens note investing. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Note investing SWAT yeah. team. Note investing SWAT team. Exactly. I like that. <laughs> I might steal that. <laughs> Trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nice. Cool. Yeah, that's interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's going to be a good year. Are you going to launch the, the course at DME or is it going to be? No. Well, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'll basically announce it then. But, uh, you know, just open the cart and do all that kind of marketing stuff probably the week after. So, cool. D, yeah, DME, uh, it's coming up in June, first week of yeah. June, right? And it's in yeah. Nashville. 
So, mm-hmm. I mean, what a what a good opportunity to go to Nashville. What a good I know. an excuse yeah, I know. to go to Nashville. So it's uh, mm-hmm. and there. Yeah. I guess you guys already talked about earlier on that there's going to be axe throwing there. So if you're interested yes. in getting involved, get involved early, sign up, and sign up for the axe throwing. Yeah, yeah. It's the next I'm uh, I'm interested to know who the sponsor was because I know Nathan, the planner. He was like, yeah, I really want to do it, but I need a sponsor. So we obviously got one, and I want to know who was bold enough to sponsor that. I know yeah. that's that's yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. One question: You, I mean, we got into it at the same time, isn't it? And this kind of would tie into maybe a more advanced course, but mm-hmm. being that we were both in it in 2012, isn't it interesting to see how people that were in the industry or coming in the industry at the same time have sort mm-hmm. of taken different trajectories to where yes. uh, we're, you know, we're paper stack. Um, there's other mm-hmm. people who all now have fairly mm-hmm. large funds and growing. It's just huge opportunity in this space to kind of do anything that you want. It yes. doesn't have to be, you don't have mm-hmm. to go develop a product or you don't have to go develop a big fund. Nope. You can certainly yep. do the, the, um, you know, the individual investing with the self-directed or invest in funds that are doing the investing. Yep. And you have so many options open to you. It's mm-hmm. for a new person. It's probably hard to believe. It but is hard to believe not. just because it wasn't like that when we got into it. It was, mm-hmm. and I think it's interesting to see just a lot of the people that I've I've noticed have been into it for the past eleven years since we were in it yep. and started. And just like wow, these these guys have really some have gone to raise up you know four, five, and six different funds. Um, one mm-hmm. one guy that was starting when we were Jack Krupe is sold a three hundred million dollar fund and oh, yeah. just. Just wow. crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. He just huge or something like that. And it was, it was bananas, but he just, he killed it. He just did a really good job and, you know, did wall street money, stuff like that. And then there's people who like, they just like, no, I'm good with my just se- mm-hmm. buying and selling on my self-directed IRA. And they've been doing it for 11 years and they're killing it making money. Yeah. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's a really great time. So, um, any last parting words that you'd give for some of the, uh, some of our listeners? Yes especially since we were talking about different courses. Uh, Mm -hmm. A lot of times people will be interested in something, so they buy a course and then they buy another course and then they buy another course and they go to this event. And while education is fantastic and you need to have it, don't get stuck there because buying a course is not going to make you a note investor. Actually doing the work will make you a note investor. I mean, it applies to everything, not just note investing. Um, But don't get stuck on that hamster wheel thinking you're solving your problems by buying more courses. That's, you know, we were just talking to somebody who had almost the identical advice. And what they said was, um, and I a hundred percent agree with you, um, Mm -hmm. that it's the jump from never having owned a note to owning your first note is almost the biggest jump you're going to take. Oh, absolutely. Because then going from one to two or two to four, is it really anything? And then, yep. then there's a jump. Maybe if you're like, Hey, I own 10 notes and I just bought 30 in one chunk. Yes. But that first jump is so mm-hmm. important. And I completely agree. I, I but was- as a caveat, I'm huge in playing devil's advocate. Uh, it drives my kids crazy. But on the flip side, you can't be so eager to buy your first note that finally uh, you're like, yeah. okay, I'm just going to buy something because I'm not no. really a note investor. If I don't buy, that's not a good idea. Either. No, you have so to you gotta, educate. Educate first, mm-hmm. set your set your swim lanes and say, whatever I'm mm-hmm. going to buy has got to fit in these swim lanes. And then yep. from there, when something fits in there, if you if you try to get perfect, it's never going to be perfect. No. When, it, when it fits yep. your box, buy it and go. Exactly. You probably want it to be a little imperfect because that's when you learn. You're like, yeah. okay, if I had, you know, if I had scripted this deal, it would be this, 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 and this. But mm-hmm. it's got this one problem. Maybe this is good for me since I'm new. Sure. You know, obviously, assuming it's a problem you've researched and realized you can fix. Yeah, that's a great way to look at problems. It's opportunities. Yes. Opportunities. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kimberly, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. It's good seeing you again. I wish I was going to be going to Nashville in June. Brett will be there. Um, okay. to rock the well, thank you guys for having me. This has yeah. been fun. It's always fun to talk to you, too. Yep. Anything else that you wanted to promote before you uh, jump off? And we're No. Good. No. I've, I've got my course coming. That's enough for me. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> All right, then uh, we'll All see right. you in Nashville in a couple months. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Next month. No, two months. Two months. Two yeah, months. That's right. All right. <laughs> All right. Great, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, bye.